So, what you are looking at? It's a dead fish. But specifically, this is an ulican or ulicon, sock, candlefish, or a dozen other names that speak to the rich history it shares with the First Nations all over the Pacific coast of North America. Each spring, nature converges on river mouths all over the coast to await the arrival of this highly nutritious and historically abundant fish. However, in the 1990s, all over the coast, we saw a crash in their populations. Not totally clear why, um, and the numbers have not recovered. So, the conservation and recovery of Ulican in Heisla territory, or Karut project, which is high, headed up by the Heisla First Nation in Kitimat, British Columbia, is a collection of indigenous, academic, and industry researchers with the goal of filling in essential life history on the fish for uh, protection and for environmental management. It uses conventional, traditional, and um, cutting edge techniques in order to do this. And among those cutting edge techniques is environmental DNA. So as many of you are aware, the heart of a robust eDNA, targeted eDNA um, project is its assay. It needs to be sensitive and specific, and that can be a tall order when, as in our case at the start of this project, there's only a couple barcode regions that we could use. Um, we came out with a very sensitive assay targeted to the COX-1 gene, but when we moved from the river into marine environments, it had a chance of amplifying DNA of some off-target smelts. Um, fortunately, since the beginning of this project, projects like the iTrack DNA initiative and others have produced tons and tons of mitochondrial DNA, and we have um, full mitogenomes for all of the necessary species. Um, so what do we do with 16,000 base pairs? Where do we start designing an assay? Well, I started with the unique seq tool, which was a bioinformatics tool developed by the Helbing Lab in collaboration with the Birol Lab at BCGSC. This is a Kamer-based bioinformatics tool that parses through large sequence data sets in order to determine regions in the sequence that are more unique to our target than to the off-target sequences. So instead of being confined to the handful of usual mitochondrial genes that we are used to using, uh, we can use the full mitogenome now and uh, came up with the extremely sensitive assay that can be used all over the BC coast. So using this assay, we can look at uh, a dozen different sites in the uh, Heisla territory and see year to year the maximum detection peaks. And notice that the uh, uh, Kimano and Wahoo River systems are strongly preferred by Willikin. Some of these weaker signals are likely just a few scout fish rather than an actual spawning event. Looking a bit closer at the Kamano River, we can see um, yearly distribution um, uh, time-wise of when the spawning happens. And looking at the very beginnings, uh, you can see a huge spike of DNA, uh, which corroborates a Heisler tradition to avoid fishing until after the fish have been in the rivers for two days. Uh, one of the strongest aspects of the Karuk project is the collaborative nature. So by combining uh, conventional and eDNA methods, we can see very tight correlation of the data and push towards a uh, uh, abundance measurements. Uh, while I'm very excited to be helping to further methods, um, it's super important to keep in mind that uh, the significance of this is actually protecting a fish that is vital to the people and the lands with which it interacts, as well as the culture that is grown alongside it. With that, I'd like to thank all of you and all of those people, and uh, thank you.